Abinadi continues teaching King Noah and his priests concerning the Law of Moses, the Ten Commandments, and the prophecies about God coming down to the earth in the form of man. In Mosiah chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, we read, And now I, Abinadi, said unto them, I would that ye should understand that God himself shall come down among the children of men, and shall redeem his people. And because he dwelleth in flesh, he shall be called the Son of God, and having subjected the flesh to the will of the Father, being the Father and the Son. The Father, because he was conceived by the power of God, and the Son, because of the flesh, thus becoming the Father and Son. And they are one God, yea, the very eternal Father of heaven and earth. In the previous chapter, Abinadi quotes Isaiah regarding Jesus Christ's generation. And again, in chapter 15, verse 10, he expounds upon it. So let's read verses 7 through 10. <clears throat> chapter 15. Yea, even he shall be led, crucified, and slain, the flesh becoming subject even unto death, the will of the Son being swallowed up in the will of the Father, and thus God breaketh the bands of death, having gained the victory over death, giving the Son power to make intercession for the children of men, having ascended into heaven, having the bowels of mercy, being filled with compassion towards the children of men, standing betwixt them and justice, having broken the bands of death, taken upon himself their iniquity and their transgressions, having redeemed them and satisfied the demands of justice. And now I say unto you, Who shall declare his generation? Behold, I say unto you, that when his soul has made an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. And now what say ye? And who shall be his seed? So, his seed, or in other words, his spiritual posterity, become Jesus Christ's children. There are examples in the scriptures where Jesus Christ calls people his sons or his daughters, two of which are regarding King Benjamin's people and also the brother of Jared. When Jesus Christ appears to the brother of Jared, he declares this very thing, or as we read in Ether chapter 13, or I'm sorry, Ether chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, <clears throat> when Jesus Christ uh, appears to the brother of Jared. He says, And when he had said these words, behold, the Lord showed himself unto him and said, Because thou knowest these things, ye are redeemed from the fall. Therefore ye are brought back into my presence. Therefore I show myself unto you. Behold, I am he who was prepared from the foundation of the world to redeem my people. Behold, I am Jesus Christ. I am the Father and the Son. In me shall all mankind have life, and that eternally, even they who shall believe on my name, and they shall become my sons and my daughters. Isaiah also calls Jesus Christ, or Jehovah as he is known in the Old Testament, the Father. Or as we read in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So in a nutshell, the doctrine is simpler to understand if you remember three ways in which Jesus Christ is referred to as the Father. First, he is referred to as the Father by virtue of divine investiture. If one is the Son of God, given all his power, authority, and grace, then one is also God and should also be referred to as the Father. Abinadi describes it with the phrase, because he was conceived by the power of God. Jesus explained that he is the Father because, quote, he gave me of his fullness, end quote, as we read in DNC section 93 verse 4. Second, Christ is the Father by virtue of his role as the creator of heaven and earth. He is, in effect, the Father of creation. Samuel the Lamanite prophesied of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of heaven and of earth, the creator of all things, from the beginning, as we read in Helaman chapter 14, verse 12, and as we just read in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. Third, 
Christ is the Father by virtue of his redeeming sacrifice. All those who are born again through the mighty power of the atonement become the sons and daughters of Christ. This is exactly what Jesus Christ told the brother of Jared, as we just read in Ether chapter 3, verse, verses 13 and 14. King Benjamin's people experienced this mighty change. Therefore, they were called the children of Christ, his sons and his daughters. For behold, this day he hath spiritually begotten you. For ye say that your hearts are changed through faith on his name. Therefore, ye are changed through faith on his name. Therefore ye are born of him, and have become his sons and his daughters, as we read in Mosiah chapter 5, verse 7. I hope I have made it simple and clear to understand how Jesus Christ is both the Father and the Son.